was asked by Monsignor Renzo uh, to deliver a talk on robotics and the transformation of the economy dynamics, I asked myself, what am I going to talk about? Really, what does this all mean? And I decided uh, that uh, I should focus. I should focus on the African context uh, for a number of reasons. Um, I'll go straight. Uh, the reason why I go to, uh, to the African context, uh, you know very well uh, where Africa is. Um, yeah, everything is said af about Africa. And I remember this uh, saying by, by Ovid, uh, ex Africa, semper aliquid novi. There's always something new out of Africa. And historically, this has really been the case. Uh, as uh, a theologian, in diaspora, in economics and management. That's how I look at myself. Um, I've always asked myself why, in spite of all measures that have been designed by great economists, great policy connoisseurs, the World Bank, the IMF, the African question never seemed to have been uh, answered fully. And in this case, when I was asked to talk about robotics and uh, transformation of economic dynamics, the question that came to my mind, is this going to be yet another of those bases that Africa has to contend with? But beyond that, my concern is, as Africa tries to define herself in the world of today, and I think the definition of Africa in the world today is pretty much the definition of humanity in the world of today. The challenges that we face are pretty much human challenges. And the solutions, whether in the economic context, are solutions when relevant for Africa should be relevant for, uh, for, other, uh, for, 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 for all humanity. So this is... This is my focus. So on the positive side, what really prompted me uh, to engage in a reflection in this context is the new thrust in Africa. Whereas in the past, Africa seemed to have always played a catch-up game, remained behind, in the context of Industrial Revolution 4.0 uh, that was spoken about, Africa is actually moving ahead and in some cases leapfrogging. Uh, my previous research on the use of mobile banking, mo mobile telephone in the banking has shown actually that Africa can and Africa has been able to participate and be a a core player in and towards the inclusion, especially of the marginalized in the banking. Is this going to happen with robotics? So these are the questions that um, um, I would like to address myself to. Now, because of the, uh, in the interest of time, I, I do not like to go into all the, all, all the details, but for me the crucial question um, of resonance to the entire robot economic venture is what should inspire the decision to invest in robotics in the African context and I think anywhere else? How can the gains of robotization, including efficiency, productivity, be best blended with the human questions, mentioning the same, human well-being and flourishing society? These are the questions that are I address, I, I'm not going to go into the definition of robotics uh, because uh, all that has already been uh, talked about. But I'd like to go straight to uh, robotics as the feature now within the economic uh, debate as I know. Well, while preparing for this paper, I, I tried to look at publications on robotics, and I must say they are not so many. The, this, there is really power city of 
uh, of information and reflection. However, there is an increasing interest in robotics. And in fact, robotics are now being looked at as the basis for national competitiveness. And on the global scale, robotics are increasingly seen as the source of competitive advantage and indeed an indif indif um, indispensable factor condition for economic transformation. Global market for industrial robotics are now projected at 2.5 million in our time. By 2014, worldwide market for robots had risen to 32 billion US dollars and also robot density per million hours worked is on the increase with Germany leading the fray at three million. In other words, the developed nations are taking the robotic enterprise very seriously as factor conditions for gaining competitive advantage, gaining competitive age. And uh, the worldwide uh, growth of the robotics um, has also gone up. So, as I said, I, uh, although Africa has, for, a, for the most, remained an outsider, when it comes to robotics, a lot has happened. And two African experiments that I'd like to share with you. Uh, the first one is that uh, in Ethiopia. Now, Ethiopia and Rwanda are two African countries now that are actually considered to be setting the pace of what effective transformation is all about. In Ethiopia now, similar to the Silicon Valley, there is the Sheba Valley, which is considered actually a premier artificial intelligence hub within the Great Lakes. And it has global resonance. Now, the ICOG lab, which is a protege of the uh, Sheba Valley, was founded uh, in 2012 by an Ethiopian uh, with the collaboration of an American and employs a team of 25 Ethiopian uh, software engineers and it pursues full uh, strong in in intelligence. In fact, its own mission resonates pretty much with what uh, today the, uh, the, the uh, artificial intelligence movement is all about. Its mission is to create software that can, only st can not only stimulate the brain, but pushes the envelope of what the brain can do. And true to its mission, uh, this has led to great transformation that has put Ethiopia on the, on, the, on the global platform. Now, we, through, the, uh, through the, um, the ICOG, you have up to 1.4 billion mobile phone deal for Ethiopia Telecom. These have all been developed. All these are landmark achievements that actually show that uh, in the African context, artificial intelligence and the quest uh, to move as a continent is a reality. And yet, and, and to me this is the, uh, the, the, the whole challenge, although this is hugely successful, the challenge we have is that uh, unless this kind of um, venture is taken in the con broader context of the lived experience of the people, unless basic conditions of life of the people are taken into consideration, these movements can only end up what some call merely uh, a hubris in new colonial circuitry. In other words, Unless the investment in robotics in the African context is taken in the context of the lived experience 
and addresses needs of people such as health, need uh, for food, shelter, education, then these kind of investments, uh, to use science exp uh, expression, can, like Caesar's spirit, come hot from hell. Um, the second um, experience uh, that I think, again, merits a lot of praise is the Rwandan um, use of the drone technology uh, to deliver blood. Now, it is known, it is a matter of fact now, that Rwanda has been acclaimed as the first country in the whole world to adopt the use of the drone to deliver the much needed life-saving blood. To understand the importance of this, one, one only has to, uh, to appreciate what, what Rwanda is all about. Rwanda is called land of the uh, uh, a thousand hills. Uh, that's where I've been working for the last, the, the last four years. The terrain, with all good intentions, could make the construction of roads highly costly, and in some cases, impossible. So in 2016, uh, with the help of Zipline, the American drone manufacturing company, the Rwandan government launched the blood uh, delivery drone. And this has had significant achievement um, uh, in, in, this, in, the, in the country. Uh, lives have been saved. Delivery times uh, for blood have been reduced. And, uh, and these milestones accord with everything uh, that is economic operational efficient. When doctors need blood, they can log on to a zipline order site or send WhatsApp application, and within the shortest possible time, they receive the blood much needed. This has led to a reduction in, uh, in mortality, child mortality, maternal mortality, and so on, because of the impact of robots. So. I, I wanted to bring all this to the attention. However, there are, there are caveats as well, as in the Ethiopian case. Um, of course, some think uh, this investment in the use of drones is misplaced, especially in the context of the fact that uh, the road network, the infrastructure has yet to be developed. However, there are also other concerns, namely um, the drone technology is not fail safe. There are several things that are not known, and especially in the delivery of blood, it's not foolproof that uh, blood delivered by, uh, by drones may not be actually harmful uh, to humans. So in my conclusion, uh, in this section, which I, I'd not like to go into uh, reading paper word by word, my concern is that uh, unless these new thrusts taken by African government are looked at in the broader context of the lived experience of what people are up to, not what people really need, that is, the need to have employment, the need to, uh, uh, to, to overcome uh, poverty, then these investments may be misplaced. And then I go straight uh, to what I think uh, now is critical to my discussion. The issue of robotics, productivity, and the human equation. Now, I like to state it probably as clearly and uh, as briefly as possible. According to the International Federation of Robotics, the following 
assumptions, we call them assumptions, they have not been proven, drive what they call the robonomics. robonomics. That is, uh, through robots, when robots are used, productivity will go up and costs will go down. And increased demand for products and services and new job opportunities will, will, will emerge through increase in productivity. And one of the other assumptions is that automation has a net positive impact on labor and wages. And they complement rather than substitute human activities. These are the generic assumptions. However, these main assumptions are at odds with and are challenged by the, uh, the economists themselves. For instance, um, Jeffrey Sachs, uh, who has written probably more than the others uh, on, 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 on robonomics, in one of his articles, The Best of Times and the Worst of Times, Microeconomics of Robots, he challenged the very logic of roboeconomics as being far removed from the reality. An increase in robotic productivity is likely to redu re reduce demand for labor, while a decline in robot in labor may trigger further decline in wages. By pushing profits up and depressing wages, the gains of roboeconomics favor, according to him, older capital owning generations rather than the young. And this has an immiserization effect on future generations. And far from raising the well-being, the robot revolution, I quote, is likely to increase the inequality of income and make the rich richer and the poor poorer and create a new class of the robo poor. And the robo poor is a kind of uh, a class of the poor that cuts, cut across the whole world. And another economist, uh, Richard Freeman, also warns that the whole challenge, the whole rob robotic thrust, may actually lead to create a new kind of feudalism. Why? Because the issue is not just merely uh, inequality that ensues from, uh, the, uh, fr from the robots but the issue of ownership. Who owns the robot rules the world. And often the robots are owned by a class. And there is no way, no guarantee from the, from the classical economic rationality that the gains will be allowed to trigger down, to, triple, uh, to trickle down uh, to the rest. And so the, another challenge with this kind of, uh, um, of uh, approach to robots, robonomics, is that we are going to create a new class of the poor. And, and, and so this is, the, uh, this is one of the challenges. So unless workers can earn income from capital as well as labor, the trend towards a more unequal distribution is likely to continue and the world will turn into a form of economic feudalism, the robot feudalism. And like the old feudalism, robot feudalism far from promoting a prosperous society and engendering the much needed social economic transformation, it will create a more fragmented world. But what do these debates say? Both robophobes, that is, those who think robots have the magic bullet to all economic problems, and you know, those, those who think that uh, the robots are a part of the problem, and th the robot fields, those who think that the solution lies with the robot, have compelling and coherent argument. In my estimation, however, and this is really what I, I focus in my paper, they fail to to address fundamental, fundamental or existential questions. What is the purpose of economic growth? To what extent 
um, should growth determine investment decision and on what type of robots to use, when to use or where not to use them? What is the purpose of human work? To what extent does the use of robotics promote this purpose? How can the demand of efficiency and productivity best be integrated with human good and a flourishing society? Now, with these questions, in the last part of my paper, and this is really what I believe would be my own contribution as uh, a theologian, uh, an ethicist, there have been rules that have been set in place uh, to try to uh, set limits and to guide uh, robotic investment. AMISO um, in 1942 already came up with a number of rules and uh, robots may not eat human beings, robots must obey uh, order given to him by human beings and so on. And uh, the UK based Joint Engineering and Physical Science Research also came up with a number of rules, uh, most of which uh, I think are quite, um, are quite attractive. But what do they mean? How can, how can we appropriate them? Uh, this is something that personally uh, reflecting uh, on the dynamics of robots in our world, I thought these five interdependent principles, I call them heuristics, I don't call them ethical principles. In other words, ways to understand and navigate through these dynamics. Um, the first principle is fostering and enhancing well-being. This requires that robo-economic undertaking should be driven by the concern for and promote the common good, which is the second principle, and protect the dignity of employees, which is the third principle, ensure there is justice and inclusivity, which is the fourth principle, and balance harms and benefits. Now, I will not have time to go into each of all these because of, uh, we need to stop. But the issue of well-being, and this is something that I, I'd like also to uh, insist on. The positive thing happening now among economists is that after a long time, the sacred cow of the GDP has fallen. That is, a number of uh, high leading econo uh, economists, Stiglitz, Stiglitz, San Fitusi, have decided that we should shift from the GDP, which is an approximation, to well being. And well being, though inaccurate, though cannot be measured, count. And so I believe that this new shift should form the fulcrum, the center for decisions on whether we should invest in robotics, well-being and flourishing. Uh, I'm not going into all those details. As well as feeling satisfied and happy, well-being means developing a person being fulfilled and making a contribution uh, to the society. And, and then the common good is something we're all used to. Promoting the common good through robotics entails procuring the good of all stakeholders, including clients and enterprises themselves, and creating the space and promoting an equitable structure that provides a platform for all, especially the least advantaged, to participate in the economic life of their community, nation, or, or society. And this precisely means that, well, uh, if a country like Africa, a, a, a country in Africa needs to, uh, to invest in robotics, the decision should be, does it foster the good of the one and the many? And I think in this case, for instance, uh, the use of the drones in the Rwandan context fits within this context. It's driven by promoting one good, which is health. And respect for human rights and dignity, and we all know Universal Declaration uh, of Human Rights places a lot of emphasis on the importance of dignity and actually all rights are based on 
and derive from the inherent dignity of the person. And so the respect for this right may require that the use of robots as substitutes for human labor, uh, that robots be used as substitutes for human labor. Um, and I'll just give, I, did not, I don't go into any detail here, but for instance, uh, uh, in, the, um, in the utility section, uh, using robots um, in electrification or in fumigation where dangerous substances that harm human beings are, are used, it becomes not just a moral imperative, but the necessary thing to use the robots. And in this case, robots become effective means to enhancing, promoting human well-being, and also protecting the dignity of the person. The dignity means that a person should not be used without due regard to their health, safety in the workplace. So using robots becomes a moral thing to do. And in this case, to say that every use of robots violates and goes against <laughs> Uh, the, the, the human good is far-fetched and I would think um, um, not, 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 not terrific. And then uh, justice and inclusiveness, uh, the whole issue of um, who owns the robots. Now, what this means precisely is that uh, when decisions are being made uh, as to what kind of robots, the principle of justice, who derives, who benefits from it, not just the owners, but also that it promotes the goods of all. And, and then balancing harms and benefits. Yes, uh, the, the, the issue is that, uh, yes, we do not know everything about the potential harm that will, are caused by robots and, in some cases, the drones. And uh, where uh, we have to uh, to balance these, uh, to, to bal balance them, uh, we have to invest in the use of robots, then due attention should be uh, taken and paid to the, uh, to the issue of do the harm that are un uh, uh, unforeseen due to information constraint uh, outweigh the current benefit. So these are some of, the, uh, uh, some of my uh, reflections. Now, I will quickly, uh, therefore, go to some of my conclusions. What do we learn from all this? And these are some of the statements that, personally, after my reflection, I'd like to, uh, uh, to drive and I hope uh, will foster more uh, discussion. We have advocated for a shift from a contrived technocratic paradigm to one inspired by well-being, human flourishing, and the pursuit of the common good. Now, one of my cherished conclusions is that the advances in robotics, artificial intelligence, and Internet of Things have and will continue to exert great influence on the economy and many other dimensions of the society in ways beyond predictions. What is needed is a courageous, balanced and realistic understanding of what robotics can and should do, that is the operational adequacy, when they may best be used, contextual adequacy, in what context, and to what extent they should be used in relation to the human agent, anthropological adequacy. Secondly, robotics versus Emplo uh, uh, employee antagonistic opposition is beneficial neither to the employee's dignity and self-worth nor to the broader economy. Instead, a, dynam a dynamic integration of robotics and humans informed by well-being and human flourishing is likely to deliver economic efficiency and productivity while safeguarding the dignity of the workers simultaneously. Number three, inequalities 
both wage income based and intergenerational, resulting from the subjugation of human labor by robotics are only symptomatic of an even more disturbing problem on which the solution to the robotic paradox rests. The ownership of robots as means of production on the one hand, and the quasi-human status accorded to robotics, the so-called homo roboticus on the other hand. Once robots are accorded human status, as in the case of humanoids, and when these are subsequently mainstreamed into the social and economic ecosystems, it becomes increasingly hard to draw the line between the worker, homo laboris, and homo roboticus, and which really matters in the broader economic enterprise. And finally, while the growing impacts of robotics on the economic landscape seems intractable, a contrived use of robotics and artificial intelligence is more likely than not going to cause social economic disequilibrium. So again, it's the influx and growing influence of robotics, artificial intelligence, and the Internet of Things. The time is ripe to re-examine with an even greater urgency the purpose of the economy, the function of growth in the broader context of human experience, and the meaning of human life and ecology. The time is ripe to accord robotics-driven enterprises the rightful place that is Numeo's servant in the service of the oikos, which is the household within the broader ecosystem, oikos logia. And I think uh, it is time for us to imagine and to take bold steps, avoiding, for me, the two uh, contrary positions, that is, looking at robots as the be-all and end-all to human uh, question, and looking at robots, on the other hand, as the problem to humanity. Robots, in my contention, <coughs> depend on and will continue to depend on the human. And promoting the humanum, the menschlich and the same, is critical to a more effective integration of the, uh, of the potentials, the capacities in these uh, actually human generated algorithmic uh, 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 artifacts to serve humanity. So this is my contention, and uh, thank you very much uh, for listening to my story, listening to me.